What's up guys, it's Dom out of here, and today we're going to be reacting to a new channel. So this is Minimal Effort Podcast. That's a, that's a great name, I should have, I should have got that name. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is New York State Euthanized a Beloved Family Pet. Viral Squirrel Causes Firestorm Online. So I have seen a little bit of this. I saw people freaking out on uh, about it on X. Uh, I did see some of the stuff about it, but I'm not like 100%... Uh, knowledgeable on the details it's gonna be interesting to see as they get into this exactly what happened from my understanding he run like and this is you know very surface level understanding of it he runs an animal sanctuary or something i, I don't know if it's like a uh like a legally sanctioned one or not um uh, but he had a squirrel that he was posting online with and somebody found out about it and they raided his house and they killed the squirrel and i think they killed another animal too um Anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, welcome back. And boy, with the election being in just three days, who would have thought that the thing we're all talking about the most right now is a squirrel and a raccoon who were taken from yeah, that's their what it was, a and euthanized by the state of New York. And this whole story is just, I mean... I would say it's shocking, but unfortunately, we've seen time and time again when organizations like this, when the government, when PETA, have seized animals and felt that the best way to handle them is to take them from loving homes and euthanize them. And unfortunately, this is just one more case with government overreach and corruption, essentially leading to the unfortunate end for a squirrel and a raccoon. And again, I live in Washington where there's plenty of these animals running around. Some dog or some coyote gets one of them. I'm not going to shed a tear. But this was somebody's family pet. This is yeah. some uh, animal that this couple rescued seven years ago and was apparently very viral on Instagram and TikTok, something that I wasn't aware of. But again, I don't I don't go on TikTok, so I wouldn't know of this. But in case you don't know what this is all about, this article from the New York Post says, Peanut the squirrel of internet fame has been euthanized after the pet was seized by New York State earlier this week, I according damn. to the Department of Environmental Conservation. The seven-year-old Gray's rescue squirrel, commonly referred to as Peanut on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, was uh, euthanized along with Fred the raccoon. So the animals could be tested for the presence of rabies. Where the fuck would the animal get rabies? They live in the house. What in the fuck? so that the animals could be tested for the presence of rabies, according to a statement from the agency obtained by WETM. Now, what's crazy about this is these animals have been living indoors for years. Whether they have rabies or not, I would assume they don't, and yeah, that they are safe not. because of the fact that they've been living around people, domesticated. Again, this squirrel, for seven years, I'm not sure how long Fred was living there, but this squirrel was certainly not a threat to anybody. Article says, in addition, a person... In Involved with the investigation was bit by the squirrel. Test for rabies. Both animals were euthanized. The animals are being... Oh, my God. Involved with the investigation was bitten by the squirrel. Now, again, the weird thing about this is they actually had them turn off their body cameras. Um, or, sorry, the officers opted not to turn on their body cameras. So there's a lot of information about this or misinformation where we can't confirm apparently that the officers or anybody was actually bitten by the squirrel. Not to mention, you'll hear from the owner of the squirrel himself about how the officers treated him and his wife during this entire fiasco. So, and actually, I'm going to play the audio right here, and this is from TMZ. Hopefully this doesn't get flagged or copyrighted here on, on YouTube. Uh, I don't know how TMZ handles this kind of stuff, but we're going to play it for you right now. We just learned that they have euthanized Peanut. And um, the raccoon as well. And the raccoon as well. Oh, there we go. Well. He turned it up. Um, he uh, I was going to say, he had it very quiet there. Couldn't hear anything. I, I am so sorry. I, I This is, this must be really difficult for you. It not only tears my family apart, but Peanut was the cornerstone of our nonprofit animal rescue. And tended... Oh, that's right, because these, this couple had actually recently started a uh, animal rescue for animals like the ones that they had in their house. 12 DEC officers raided my house as if I was a drug dealer. I was sat outside my house for five hours. I had to get a police escort to my bathroom. I wasn't even allowed to feed my rescue horses breakfast or lunch. I was sit sat there like a criminal. 
after they interrogated my wife to check out her immigration status. Which I find painfully um, ironic, given the current state of the amount of illegal immigrants in this country due to the... Yeah, like, literally, look at this girl. You wouldn't even think she's an illegal... Like, I'm assuming she's, like, Eastern European or something, right? She's either got to be Eastern or Northern European, judging by the look of her. If they thought she was uh, an immigrant. I, I, I mean, you can't hear her accent. The current administration in states like New York that have allowed them to just... Yeah, what about sanctuary uh, infest, cities? You know, infiltrate their way into our, our, our states and our, our country that they would go after this man's wife for her, Im her immigration status. Then proceeded to ask me if I... You know what this reminds me of? It kind of <laughs> it's probably because she's a good-looking girl, right? Because you literally saw this in, I think it was Sweden, right? You had massive amounts of almost exclusively male migration from Africa and the Middle East and all these other pla pa places, and the, the government was this, like, super feminist government, right? And they kept saying, oh, you know, you're racist, you're, uh, you know, you're Islamist, or not Islamist, Islamist is somebody who's, uh, uh, like, wants radical Islam. You're, you're racist, you're xenophobic, you're, uh, you know, anti-Islam, uh, what's the fucking term? Uh, oh, I cannot remember the term for it. There's a specific, Islamophobic. You're Islamophobic, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And then all of a sudden they get a massive wave of refugees once the Ukraine thing kicks off, Right mostly women and, you know, Ukrainian women, pretty good-looking girls, right? The Eastern Europe, the Slavic countries, they're known for having really, really beautiful women. And then suddenly that same, you know, all of a sudden there's this massive influx of gorgeous women, and then that same feminist government suddenly now, oh, we need to talk about the immigration problem in Sweden. It's, it's the, man, uh. I had cameras in my house. Then proceeded to go through every cabinet nook and cranny of my house for a squirrel and a raccoon. They got a search warrant? They got a search warrant. Four departments and a judge signed off on a search warrant for a squirrel and a raccoon. And then they took them and killed them. Why did they go through all that to get a search warrant for an animal that had been with you very safely and the world witnessed this for seven years? I feel like this is the red pilling moment for the guys on TMZ. I don't know about you. Why now suddenly did they show up with their search warrant and and take these animals? We haven't a clue. We don't know who made the com uh, the, the complaints. Again, Peanut was an uh, indoor squirrel not harming anybody. He's been with us for seven years. Not a single complaint was ever filed for this animal. We had him for seven and a half years. He became the world's most famous squirrel. We weren't hiding him by any means. He was all over TikTok. He became the first squirrel on TikTok to ever hit a million followers. He did every news station around the world. He's helped people. He's helped kids gather joy. And then we started a nonprofit animal rescue called Peanuts Freedom Farm to help animals like Peanut fight a good fight when they're in a neglected case or they're sitting in a slaughter auction. And he was the cornerstone of our life and our organization. We used his platform to help raise money for the 300 animals we have at our sanctuary. And again, these are people who are actually doing real conservation. And of course, because it doesn't align with the government of New York, they had to be uh, dealt with, essentially. Now, again, he mentions that he doesn't know who called or whatnot. We do know now, and I'm not going to put the person's picture on the video because of the fact that I'm not going to give this person more attention than they deserve. Essentially, it was somebody who lives out of state who called the off, uh, the officials in New York to report. Bro, what like what fucking beef do you have with this guy and his fucking squirrel that you don't you don't even live in the same fucking state, right? It's not like it was a neighbor that was annoyed by like the animals or something. It's somebody that lives across the country fucking call that is the most brown nosing behavior i've ever heard in my life that is like step on me daddy i want to lick the boot behavior this that is the most insane fucking shit i've ever heard this and get them to actually get the warrant to seize these animals i guess she was like a uh, up-and-coming influencer somebody in photography or the makeup industry or some crap like that i don't know but again her information's out there i am not going to put it out there but this person is absolute scum for doing this now what's crazy is we've also seen that the new york state department environmental conservation's commissioner has locked down his account apparently he makes two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year and of course you can see that's him right here interim commissioner sean mayhar and there's a lot of these people 
in this conservation uh, in industry, essentially, that this department from the government that are essentially paid. I love how it says nonpartisan. There's no such thing as nonpartisan government officials, right? Um, you, you know, you may claim it, but let, let's be real. It's everyone's got a political opinion. And, and it, this is the one thing I find so fucking funny about, like, this is kind of an aside. There's not much to do with this. But one of the things I've noticed is people who claim, oh, um, you know, they're they're – People who are, you know, if somebody says I'm not political, usually they'll, they just don't know much and it's fine, right, whatever. That's like a true nonpartisan. When people know quite a bit about politics and then try to claim, oh, I don't pick a side, they're almost always like one of the most sycophantic people for whatever side, right? Like if they're uh, if they're a, a lefty but they claim, oh, I'm a, I'm a centrist, you know, I'm not – I'm not really uh, one side or the other. They they will fall in line with, you know, fucking absolutely every left wing opinion. If they're a right winger and they claim, oh, I'm actually a centrist, they will fall in line with every right wing opinion more so than people who actually claim that they're right or left wing. Right? I find that the 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 most um uh, the most politically radicalized people are ironically those who actually know a bunch about politics and claim to be centrists. They're always the most radical. Right. Like, uh, it, to the point where, like, half the time you'll see somebody that, like, self-identifies as a commie, right? And then you ask them, like, what they believe. And they're literally just a neolib, right? They claim they're a commie, but they're actually just a neolib. And then you'll have somebody that, like, claims they're a centrist, right? Oh, the left and right both have good sides. And then you ask them what they believe. And they're, like, a literal fucking communist, right? It's so funny. I, I, anyway, that's just an aside. To go after people like this couple and their squirrel. Savvy says, if you want to know who's uh, taking tax dollars to kill your pet squirrels and raccoons, this is who. They're very proud of their DEI team, and their favorite pastime is ruining the joy of others as they murder innocent animals. 50 different ways to handle the situation, and they chose the wrong one, but they will always choose the wrong one. And, and it's not just this guy. There are other people that I've seen who are also shutting down their accounts, privating their accounts, protecting their accounts on Twitter, because what they've done is they've set, essentially caused a, you know, a brush fire trouble to start. save the squirrels. I because saw that. Because people are sharing the images, like Elon Musk has been beating this war drum all day long saying president trump will save the squirrels rest in peace peanut and of course people are sharing videos of fred the raccoon and of peanut and you can see again look like i said i, I live in a state where these people these these animals are a pest we have raccoons everywhere i would probably never try to hurt one but they definitely are not friendly if you have outdoor animals this dangerous for your animals to get near a raccoon but these animals are living safely Raccoons are usually not a big issue unless they get cornered, and then they will fucking, they can go. I think I've told this story before, but we were at my buddy's farm uh, when we were in high school, and there was a raccoon that kept getting into his chicken coop, and he found it, and uh, his dogs chased up a tree. He shot it. It fell um, probably 20 feet out of this tree, right? Sh shot it in the face. Its eyeball was hanging out. It fell, like, 20 feet out of the tree, got up, and, like, instantly fought all three of his fucking hunting dogs at the same time. So it took a, a shot to the head, a 20-foot drop, and three dogs to take that fucking thing down. Raccoons can go. Like, they, they can fucking fight. Um, but most of the time, unless they're cornered or have rabies, they're not going to. Uh, they're just going to fucking skedaddle out of there. In their home, there was no reason that any of this should have been handled this way. But again, this is... Every time you have government oversight, government interference, dealing with people who are absolutely minding their own business, doing their thing, entertaining others, doing, you know, wholesome entertainments, not hurting anybody. And it has caused essentially this media firestorm, this, this complete outcry on Twitter to do away with all this government oversight. Now, of course, we've seen these fake statements coming out from Trump in advance. I personally think it would be brilliant if Donald Trump and all of the other memery that he's been getting into – would actually make a statement on it. But there was this statement put out, and apparently it was a false statement. You can see from the community notes down here. So if you're seeing a statement from the Trump camp, much like this AI video. It has come to my attention that the corrupt state of New York using the Department of Environmental Conservation. Not a real video. So don't fall for it, guys. These are not actual statements that have been put out by Trump or his campaign, but it hasn't Make stopped. America the great again. And of course, you'll see Dred Roberts here saying Trump just flipped nature red with a squirrel here with a Make America Great Again hat on. And this is just blowing up everybody's timeline. You can That's see for sure Trump with the fucking centurion squirrels. Insane. The level of interest the story has, because once again, it's not just about a squirrel. Like I said, it's just government if a overreach. Squirrel gets run over. 
on the street here in Washington, I'm not going to shed a tear. Because there's millions of these little buggers running all over the Pacific Northwest. But this is somebody's beloved household pet, domesticated animal that they have been taking care of. They rescued for seven years. And just three days before the, the national election for the state of New York to have their government put on uh, under a micro... This would have been even funnier if they kept DC fucking blue. <laughs> that would have been so good. This is DC always votes blue. Even... Uh, I, I, oh, I think since they've uh, allowed DC to vote, they've literally always voted blue. Microscope like this is absolutely a horrible look for them, and I do think Trump would be smart to try to capitalize on this as much as he possibly can. So I'm going to leave it right there, guys. Let me know what you think about all this, and I will catch you guys on the next one. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of wild that this, of all things, has become a fucking partisan issue, right? You know, killing a pet squirrel. Um... I guess everything is political now, right? It's you, you literally can't avoid it no matter what. Everything is political. But the, you know what the annoying thing about that is, though, is like the left are the ones that enforce this, right? They've spent the last, what, five decades, six decades at this point trying to make everything a culture war. And the right, as always, slow to react. Kind of had a little bit of a reaction in the, you know, the 80s and the 90s, the satanic panic. Then it all kind of died down. Uh, and then now you're finally starting to get another reaction out of the right. Uh, you know, you've got that for like maybe the past like six or seven, eight years. And now it's, oh, why do you make everything political, right? It's like they'll do something, you react to it. And then they're like, why did you make it political? It's it's always, it's it's the like the most gaslighty behavior ever. But yeah. anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, be sure to check him out. I have the link to the original video down below. This guy's got a, a small channel. He's got a 1.5K subs. So one of the, the rare times I've actually reacted to a channel smaller than mine. Uh, so definitely be, you know, be sure to check them out, give them a subscription. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.